citizens. Now, you, you recall that the different categories of MPs adopted different approaches. The NRM MPs chose to go and consult their party, their party leaders within the districts. Mm -hmm. uh, ordinarily, a process that would be, uh, would be adopted if you were consulting on amending a party constitution. Now, those who were opposed to the bill also decided to organize public rallies and public events where people would come and, you know, in, their, in call us, say, mm -hmm. we support, we oppose. So we felt that, one, there, there was really no scientific process on how you generate views from citizens who say either we support or, and, or, or we oppose. And, and therefore what we chose to do as research organizations was to organize, to, to plan a systematic research process go out there, interact with the voters, and be able to ask them whether they, was, they were in support or opposed to the amendment, mm -hmm. so that we can bring that evidence to actually bear on the debate in Parliament. And, and so we, we were able to, we selected 100 constituencies, and uh, we did purposeful sampling, basically saying we needed to have constituencies where members had declared mm -hmm. that their their constituencies are in support and or those actually, that said mm -hmm. their constituencies were not in support so that we go check check that out and produce the evidence and of what there the are instances is. where you found that for instance a member of parliament had come out and declared and said my people support it mm -hmm. but what in actual sense your survey reveal, yeah. revealed that you know people actually opposed to it Essentially, that is the general finding across the board. The general finding uh, across all the constituencies, with the exception of one of the constituencies in Chagegwa district, is that the population, the majority, are opposed to the bill. I think the most striking probably was in uh, Rafael Magezi's constituency, who is the, the mover of the bill. Uh, who actually even came on, uh, I think it was on NTV, when he said, if my people do not support the bill, I'll go and withdraw it. Now, in, in uh, Igara, I think it's Igara West constituency, uh, over 2,500 respondents participated in the survey. 87% of them said they don't want uh, the amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, they are opposed to the removal of age limit. Only 13% supported the removal. And that is almost replicated across the country uh, as as uh, as you said earlier in eastern uganda where the opposition to the bill is even uh, upwards of 100 percent i see that you sampled 50,000 people and honestly we have a population of 40 40 million now 38 you know <laughs> plus or minus yeah. Yeah. 50,000 people, do you think that's enough to give a picture of what it is that people really actually, want the, from 102 people? Actually, Shira, the, the sample is not 50,000 people. They, because we went into constituencies mm -hmm. and we wanted to make sure that we have a, a reasonable number of uh, voters participating in the survey. And so we created that, that opportunity. And every, every person who wanted to participate uh, in different community meetings, in focus group discussions, had the opportunity to participate. So the 50,000 plus is, the, collect, is the, the, the sum of the number of people who participated in the different constituencies. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say that uh, in terms of sampling, uh, in terms of the scientific method of sampling, if you are doing 100 constituencies out of about 300 constituencies, that is definitely more than a representative sample. Uh, and if you are able to get over 500 people in each, each of these constituencies, you still have gotten a reasonable sample uh, to be able to give you an indication of what the perceptions are in that area. Okay, let's talk about the regions because it, the, the, the figures really strike me because you say 95% in eastern region yeah. are opposed to it. Yeah. Uh, we have 76% in western Uganda. Yeah. Sorry, 76 percent in Western Uganda. Now, Western Uganda is essentially seen as a stronghold of, you know, President UM70 and the NRM. Yeah. Mm. But we see it is 76 yeah. percent. And Central Region, which most people say that, you know, has a lot of opposition, especially Kampala and these urban areas, has 66 yeah. percent. What could inform these figures that we're seeing? What were you finding? I, th I think that there are two important explanations uh, around that. One is that. Uh, uh, in some of the constituencies where the MPs are openly supporting the amendment, you actually find that the number of citizens who are opposed lower mm -hmm. compared to constituencies where MPs are openly supporting 
uh, 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 supporting the amendment. So in other words, if you are an MP and you support the bill, the likelihood is that more voters in your constituencies actually support the bill. And I think, in, especially in, in central Uganda here, most of the constituencies that were selected are those where members had said they support, uh, they, are, they, they are in support of the bill. Uh, in Western Uganda, I think that uh, there, there is, uh, in, through the discussions, mm. the, the impression that comes out is that Ugandans were, have be, are looking for an opportunity to peacefully transition from President Museveni to another leader. Uh, not out of hatred, not out of anything, mm -hmm. but out of the fact that uh, everybody appreciates that this is a country that has, for over 56 years, failed to have a peaceful transition of power. And, and I think that uh, citizens are looking at this as like, this is a constitutional opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you remove that opportunity, you basically you have set up yourself for a potential life presidency. All right, let me ask you this as well, because you know that people who say whether you do any research, whether you do what, this thing is going to be passed anyway, because even the president has spoken about it and mm. is in support and in fact has asked for or has proposed that the term limit should also be increased. Mm, uh, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, term. the term limits, yeah, yeah. from mm. five to seven. Mm. What is the so what in your report and what is your way forward after here? Are you going to go before the Committee of Parliament? Are you going because now that, that session has also closed? What are you going to do with this report? You see, for us, we are researchers. Mm. Uh, our, our business is to be able to generate evidence, to inform public policy, to inform citizens and say these are the facts. Uh, smart people and, uh, and progressive governments will look at the facts Look at the proposals backed by the evidence and adopt those proposals so that you can make progress. Uh, dumb people and dumb governments will just dismiss all that and say, Do you think this, this government is will have some time to look at this report? I, I actually think that, no, I, I actually think that uh, they will look at the report. And I, implement? Uh, I, I should say that actually this study precedes another study that we are, we've been doing through. A, 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 group, a focus group discussion which is looking at every individual MP and the position that they are likely to vote with and in relation to their constituencies. Mm -hmm. That report we are going to be releasing it on uh, Tuesday morning and we hope to have members of parliament there and we present the data to them and this data. So essentially we will be talking to the people who will be seated in that house and and uh, who will be shouldering the responsibility that is embedded in the oath that they took to protect and defend the constitution. So I, I think that government, as in the executive, is a different uh, entity. Mm -hmm. But I think members of parliament have a responsibility to listen to, their, to the voters, to listen to the citizens, and make decisions that take into account those interests. You know, I know my director is asking me to you know, end this, but I need to ask you in 10 seconds, if you can, what is your response to what President Museveni said, especially about term limits? So we are now dealing with Article 102B, yeah. but there's a chance that we're actually going to deal with the term limits as well. What is your response? No, I, I, I think my response has been that uh, uh, President Museveni uh, basically said the term, the, the five-year five year term is not enough. No. And my question has been, if five years is too short, is he saying that 30 years he has been in power is, too long, is also too short? So I don't think that in terms of the length of the term, uh, Ugandans do, don't have to be lectured by President Museven uh, on, on that time because uh, he has been in power for 30 years. If you can't do stuff in 30 years, you can't do them in seven years, you probably want to do them in five years. I think that uh, what is important here is to honor the constitution and make sure that the institutions of government are the ones that any president, whoever comes in, every president can only make a contribution. You can never solve the problems of any country. And I think that President Museveni is, is also here to make a contribution, and he has made the phenomenal contribution. And I think that he doesn't need really to be uh, almost to embarrass himself now starting discussing things really I think that uh, that really uh, I, I think that uh, the you you need a certain level of decency when you are a leader uh, mm -hmm. and and there are certain things that really lower 
uh, your esteem as a leader. Okay, thank you very much, Godbert Mshare. I've been speaking to Godbert Mshare, who has been part of a group of NGOs to talk to us about the studies, uh, the study on the report on citizens' perce perception on the proposed amendment of Article 102B conducted by Uganda Governance Monitoring Platform and Citizens' Coalition on Electoral Democracy. Thank you very much. Let's now take a very short break, and TV Weekend Edition continues shortly. Still to come 